Welcome, welcome. Uh, hello, everybody. Well, you're here to learn about uh, US green card options and, and how to live your American dream. Um, we do have an amazing opportunity for you here today. We're going to be talking about the EB3 and the EB5. So the EB3 is the perfect gateway into the US. You can get yourself an EB3 or you can buy an EB3 for a loved one. It's all about $50,000. Shane will go into the details shortly, but you can buy yourself a US green card. Hallborn will get you the employment. You do need to do that job, but not forever. You can pivot into something more in line with your skill set after you get your green card and you've obviously moved across to the US. The US is literally built on immigration. Without immigration, there is little to no blue collar work. The US need you and Holborn, we can be that bridge to get you there, the conduit. We all work for Holborn, everyone talking today, uh, we're, all, we're all working for Holborn Asset Management and Holborn is the second largest international brokerage in the world. We're a brokerage, it's, it's, it's what we're good at, it's, it's what we do, we advise people on the right investments. Investments into property or offshore hard currency equity-based saving plans. We provide tax-efficient offshore structures, and a big part of our business recently is golden visas, alternative passports for offshore permanent residency. Holborn are very big, and we are very successful. If a country has a citizenship program, we can get you in it, and it's as simple as that. At the best possible price, because as a company, we cover all price points. We've got lots and lots of experience. Uh, this year so far, last year and the year before, Holborn were the number one provider of Portuguese gold visas in the world. We do all the citizenships, but we are here today to talk about the US EB3 and the EB5. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pass you on to Shane. Uh, Shane is our in-house global residency expert. And Shane's going to present to you on the US, but please, any questions about any other country, be it Caribbean or uh, Portugal, uh, Greece, Spain, Hungary, uh, ask away, type it in, um, and uh, we'll come back to them at the end. So uh, with that said, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoy this evening's webinar, uh, and let me pass you on to Shane, Shane Peacock. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for the invite. Um, good to see so many people uh, have rocked up. Um, I think it's important that people understand the differences between EB5 and EB3. Um, but before we get there, it's also important to understand what is residency? What is res residency? What is uh, citizenship? Now, with something like the EB, EB options within the US, these are all permanent green card options, which are generally residency um, initially. Those residencies allow you to live, work, settle anywhere within that country. You, are, you can utilize any of the benefits that any other citizen has. You just cannot vote or run for office yet. Now, generally speaking, when we're looking at citizenship or residency by investment, it is either done through real estate, donation, fund route, or bonds. Right? Tonight, however, we are going to be looking at case-specific and in this case, we're going to be looking at EB-5 and EB-3. As Chris mentioned now, we do have alternative options throughout the globe, everything from the Caribbean, which is direct citizenships, all the way to Europe as an opportunity. But I think first, let's, let's begin with EB-5. So EB-5 is an immigrant visa program. It does require you to create a certain amount of jobs, in this case, 10 uh, jobs specifically. Um, it does need to go through specific regional centers. Um, these are centers of investment and generally have projects underneath them. The program was revised and has been updated since 15th of March 2022. The improvements that were brought about is it has been legislated, uh, the process, which also means now that it isn't going anywhere there was a lot of uncertainty before and we'll go through sort of a timeline what happened with eb5 but current status is it is very secure it isn't going anywhere and it is not changing now the history of the eb5 as you can see has been quite changed well uh, not dramatic but it's changed quite a few times in 1990 the program originally started 
2008 till 2009, we had the financial crisis, um, which then meant that we expanded on EB5. Now, a lot of our larger sort of country bases like India, like um, China, obviously flocked towards EB5 and that we had quite a lot of backlog, so which caused a little bit of time restraint. In 2020, 2021, your regional centers lapsed. So they were no longer part of the constitution. And because of that, it, there was a little bit of uncertainty. 2021, September is when everything happened. So the sunset clause happened, everything expired, but it just meant the new development of the new program, right? So we're still looking very, very strong. You can see from the map, we're back up to the numbers we were prior. This is per year. We're looking at on average probably currently about seventeen to eighteen thousand applications per year. Now, EB five requirements is fairly straightforward. It does require a significant investment. That investment currently is eight hundred thousand in rural areas or high unemployment areas, and generally are going to be multi-purpose buildings, um, multi-purpose development with shopping workspace and residential. Uh, we need to make sure that the funds are secured from a, a lawful and traceable uh, portion. You do need to create 10 jobs and your investment has to be seen at risk. So what that means is although we can mitigate a lot of the risk with our investment uh, offerings and our partners, the funds still need to be seen at risk so that we cannot put any guarantees, we cannot put any uh, clauses on that. But you'll see we do mitigate that risk via our projects. Uh, and it must be a commercial enterprise. So that's what the, the true meaning of regional center is. It needs to be a commercial enterprise, able to develop on a large scale and able to provide each applicant with 10 uh, jobs. Permanent residency can be secured in two years. However, we have uh, started to explore and have projects that are securing it in less than a year. Right. So if that's the option for you, we can get you your initial residency within a one-year period. You can include your spouse. It does need to be married. You can include children up until the age of 21. Um, so it's important with that, with, with the age of 21, because of the timelines on to how long it takes, we just need to manage that. So clients with children approaching 21, please get in contact uh, and we'll be able to uh, facilitate that process for you. You will have, as I said to you, you will have all the same rights as any other US citizen. You just won't be able to vote, which means you've got access to American education system, their healthcare system, and so forth. Um, any qualified individual is is uh, applicable as long as you're above the age of 18. The source of funds is quite important. So you will need that investment amount of at least 500,000 um, US dollars. And I'll explain why we, why we say 500,000. And it does need to come from a source. It can be sponsored. It can be uh, put up by somebody else. So a third party can uh, pay for your installment, but that will be dependent on sort of what, where the source of funds is coming from. There's no requirement for age. There's no requirement for a certain education. And there's no requirement for wealth. Your only requirement is that you're a healthy, above the age of 18 individual and that you are wanting to move across to uh, the US to be able to live, work, and um, obtain a, a permanent residency. The process itself is fairly straightforward. As I said to you, we do have certain projects that has got an expedited process. The expedited process is purely on the basis that it does form a priori priority for the US government, and therefore they have allocated extra resources to be able to facilitate the application process. Now, Fairly straightforward, your initial process, we will check source of funds. We will submit um, all that information for the lawyers to review. We will then um, need the minimum of 500,000 transferred to the lawyers where it will be held in escrow. At that point, we will submit uh, and file your forms, um, specific forms for your initial con uh, conditional green card. 
That at the moment is moving quite quickly. So we're able to get that application in within roughly about six months. Once you have that conditional green card, it gives you the rights to be able to move you and your family across to the US and to be able to be employed and start your life. Once we have that conditional green card and you have moves across the US, we will file any conditions to be removed. Right? That takes, on average, two years. Again, it can be done quicker, but that's generally what we're looking at. So give it about two years for your conditions to be made, taken away. Once you have your permanent green card, it cannot be taken away. It is got a validity of 10 years before renewal. So something important to remember. And once you are a permanent resident, you can move it towards citizenship as long as you hold your residency for a minimum of at least five years. All right. Now, our experience within this field is quite vast. We've been doing this for quite some time. As you can see from the information provided on the screen, we've been doing this for over 15 years and we have the partners to be able to assist. Everything from New York City to um, New Jersey, we've, we've, we've got projects already there. Our two current projects that we have are a little bit vast and different. The first project is Summit uh, NJ. Now, this is in New Jersey. It offers a multi-purpose, um, cross-functional uh, type of apartment building. Everything from gaming rooms to spas to work facilities, everything you quite require. But what it is, is requiring an investment. That investment is a minimum of 500,000. And the reason why it's 500,000 is because the developers, the Kushner family or the Kushner companies will loan you your initial 3 million, uh, your 300,000 euro. So 800,000 is your investment price, but 300,000 can be um, financed through the company. That is financed at a rate of about 10%. So it is a little bit high, but it's only financed for a three year period. After which three years has gone by, you do get your full, uh, your funds back, less any kind of financing route. So there's no additional funds to pay. It's just your finances taken off of your uh, initial costs. As you can see from this, only 4.6% of the entire capital stack is coming from an EB5. So your risk has been completely diverted. Your main lenders uh, will be covering majority of the investments well, of your capital required. So that gives you an idea. Sorry, I'm going quite a few, uh, quite quickly because I know a lot of you want to know more about the EB3, but it's important to understand what the EB5 is. EB5 gives you the rights to be able to do what you want, when you want, um, in accordance with the law, obviously, but it's a far less restrictive uh, option than the EB3. But at the same time, it's also a far cheaper uh, option with being the EB3. So the other project that we have as an EB5 is what we call Calvary Recycling. So this is a water treatment uh, company. We recycle uh, water from mining, mining developments, uh, farming developments. So we take that water, we recycle it and make it uh, an opportunity for drinking. The benefit of this specific property it is, is a US approved uh, project. What that means is we are able to expedite um, your application. Instead of waiting the general 12 months, we can submit everything, get everything done within about six, uh, which means you can get your cards earlier. Now there is a dividend process here. You will receive a dividend of 5% uh, per year fixed, but um, after 3.5, uh, with a set, it works out to be 7.15 because effectively we're giving you $1 million back. So your 900,000 or your 800,000 investment, you know, at least after three and a half years, you're going to get your 1 million back. Right. So quick information about our EB files. It's important to understand that if EB5 is a route you would like to go, it's important to sort of set up some time with us on an individual basis. Um, let us know your specific requirements, your specific family sizes, 
Through that, we will be able to assist you in structuring the right option and bringing the right project to you, whether it be your reduced capital or whether it be your uh, reduced timing. Um, it's important to understand what, what your risks are, what your opportunities are. So please let us know about that. Um, I know through Chris, Chris was telling me your EV3 is your main sort of priority why a lot of our clients have logged in today. All right, guys. Um, so EV3, as I said to you, is a employment-based project where it requires you to be willing and wanting to work within the job provided. So there are specific uh employment companies that have requested and been approved from the immigration division to bring in external workers from offshore to be able to facilitate their employment needs now it does not require you to have certain uh, amounts of assets certain amount of incomes it does not require you to have any kind of experience the only thing that it does need you to have is a clear police record, the ability and the current knowledge of the English language, so at least basic level of English, and you would need to have an investment, oh, well, uh, uh, the, the capital. Capital is generally 48,000 to roughly about 60,000 plus, depending on how many applicants are involved in each application. We provide you with a work sponsor and you need to be willing to work for that work sponsor. So that's an important thing to be able to do. Currently, the process involves onboarding. So we need to make sure that we have all your documentation or the right information. We need to submit um, that documentation together with um, your police records and things like that. You will then need to have a interview with your local embassy. So an American ambassador from your local embassy will have a meeting, an interview with you. During that, they need to establish your purpose of why you're wanting to go across the US. Your purpose at that point will be to work for the relevant sponsor um, that is providing you with the access into the green card. <clears throat> from there, we will apply to the labor office and we'll receive your labor certificate. That process up until that point, you're probably looking at about just over 12 months. Once we've got your labor certificate, we can apply and file for your green card and we can move you across to the US to start your uh, life and to start your employment, right? Now, the green card is provided and it's permanent green card on the day of arrival. So the day that you arrive within the US is the day that you will receive your green card. Right. That means it cannot be taken away from you and you have the rights to come in and out as pleased. Now, the initial job that we are currently uh, facilitating is a company in Allentown, Pennsylvania. It's about two and a half hours outside of New York. Currently, it is a position which is a production helper. So you'll be working inside a warehouse. The facility is based in Allentown, and it will be a number of different jobs within that warehouse, whether it be labeling, whether it be packing. Obviously, what they do tend to do is if you, they do um, see additional benefits in yourself, so they, they see you've got experience in other fields, they may generally pull you up into other positions, which obviously then create a more beneficial um, salary for you. Current salary... <clears throat> It's you're looking at about twenty two thousand. It is an hourly rate, so this can be increased. Um, twenty two thousand is at least what you'll be getting per year. After a period of time, they will also uh, add medical insurance. So thirty days later, they will add medical insurance, and you can see from your general duties, this is what you need to be. You're not stuck at this job. It's important to understand. This is your entry into the U.S. This is your uh, opportunity to obtain your green card at a fairly reduced price. As you can as 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 you can see from this presentation, we looked at the EB five starting at eight hundred thousand. Here you're starting at four hundred or forty five thousand dollars. 
differences between the two of them. Yes, there are some labor in, involved and we are providing you with a future job. Um, but also in this format, that's 48,000 plus you're looking at a cost. So it's not an investment, it will not be returned. Whereas your EB5 gives you an investment that will be returned with interest. Right. It's difficult to sort of give you a generalized pitch because it is that simple. As long as with, with the first one, the important thing there is you you have to invest funds and those funds have to be seen at risk. You have to develop at least 10 jobs. With the EB3, it's fairly straightforward. Your intention has to be that you are wanting to work for that sponsor. Right? So fairly straightforward. Um, Chris, it's not that much detail. Um, I think everyone has now a general idea of how it all works. But I think it's also important that if clients do want to dig a little bit more, I think it's important that they they set up some time with you and, and, and the two of us can go through it in more detail. Yeah, how do how do people get a hold of us, Chris? Uh, so we've reached out to everybody uh, on email. So the easiest way would just to be uh, replying back to the email. But if you've got any questions, please write them. Write them up, um, and what we'll do is we'll bring Dale along, and he'll read out your questions for you, um, and then follow up will just be us reaching out to you, or you reaching out to us. But uh, Dale, please share us some of the questions. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Um, yeah, so we've had quite some, a lot of activity happening in the chat there. A couple of questions coming through specifically with regards to a potential interview before you get granted a green card. I know. A lot of people believe that there is some kind of process before you actually get that. So is there an interview after the, the two-year period or do you just get given the green card automatically? No, so there is an interview process. So you've got to, I mean, you, 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 you've got to initially sit with the, the lawyers and everything to go through what your timelines are, what the process is. But there is a interview that is structured with the local embassy. So one of the local embassy employees will run through an interview and that main objective of that interview is to discover that your intention is to actually go work. They want to make sure that your first priority is to come across to the US, work in that position and continue and grow the economy as is. So they don't want to be hearing that you want to come across and you want to open up your own business and all these things. They want to know that your first intention is that job. So. Yes, there is an interview process, but it's fairly straightforward. Okay. And um, if people were to change jobs once they get that site, would they would the EB3 be in jeopardy? Uh, how would that work if they had to leave their job that they get given when they move across? Yeah, so your green card, you, act, you effectively get on day one when you arrive. So at no point in time is your green card affected by any kind of change in jobs, if you were to be sick or if you had to go home or whatever the circumstances are, your green card is there. The only thing that can be affected is if you do arrive and you just never work for that company, then obviously we've got a situation where they can go to the immigration office and say, well, listen, he said he wanted to come work. He's now not working. Then obviously we've got a problem. But if you go across and do what, what, what you're supposed to do, no, your green card will not affect it. Okay, great. And with regards to family members that are allowed to join the EB3 applicant, who who is allowed to come with? So on this one, we're quite limited. It's generally going to be two generations. So husband and wife, we do need to have a marriage uh, certificate there. And then children up until the age of 21. They are very fast, hard line with the 21. So as long as we are getting receiving your uh, green card at the age of 21 that's where it becomes important so clients that are anything from 19 to 20 we need to start moving quite quickly because even when we process as quickly as we can so an expedited process we're looking at a minimum of at least 18 months for the entire timeline if we don't expedite you're looking at at least a two-year period are parents allowed to join the applicant or was it unfortunately children? not so just the two generations on this i know some of our other programs we do have three generations maybe siblings and so forth but with the the u.s um, employment benefits uh, options they are restricted to just the two generations 
Okay, uh, a couple questions about the EB-5 now. People are asking if a third party assists in funding the EB-5, how is that going to affect the application? Will there be a note on that, that they have been assisted with funding it? Or is it still solely in their own name as they are the main applicant? So what happens is the where the funds come from is neither here and there. It can be sponsored. So if it's whether it's a portion of the, the funds or the entire amount, and this works for EB3 as well, it can be done. The only thing with an EB5 is any funds that are provided, there is a legal uh, source of funds that is, is is looked into by the lawyers. So every every amount that is received, it is checked, but it does not affect your application. So there's no note on application as to where the funds have come from. It's just that the lawyers need to do a source of funds on everybody that is uh, providing money. Okay, and then they're asking for confirmation again. So only once the USCIS has granted approval of the application, will they be allowed to move to the US? They can't beforehand. Yeah, we've got to file your, your if you're looking at the EB3, we've got to file your um, application. Once your application has been proved, uh, approved, that's when you can move across. You've got to pick it up in person. So when you arrive in the US, you go to the immigration office and you can pick up your, your green card. All right. And then uh, people are asking, with the EB3, it's mentioned that you can do the payments in, in tranches, up to three tranches. Um, at well, I mean, yeah, the, the way we structure it is it's always going to be three tranches. So your initial, uh, and it, and it's in some cases four, depending on, on the EB-5. But your initial uh, phase, there's some legal fees. You're generally looking at about $20,000 uh, paid up front. That will facilitate all your application, your lawyers, your everything like that. And then once your certificate has been approved, that's your secondary payment, and then your final 10000 once you've been approved. So it's split into three different payments over a 18 month period. Okay. Uh, and our final question that we've had come through is what is the key difference between an EB3 and an EB5? So what does an EB5 allow you to do that an EB3 does not? So your key difference is both of them are ultimately green card programs. So you, they both provide you with a green card. The difference between the two of them is the one gives you a lot more freedom. <laughs> it's a lot more investment, but it gives you a lot more freedom. Straight from day one, you are able to live anywhere, work anywhere. You, you've got you've got the same rights as anyone else. With an EB three, it does require you to work within that position. That your intention needs to be coming across for that specific job. So you need to be employed. You need to work in that company. So a lot of the times you're a little bit more restricted. So in this case, you you you're going to be moving across to Allentown first. From Allentown, you obviously you develop it. Uh, your career from there and you can start expanding but that's those are your main differences also with your eb5s you're generally going to make some sort of return off of it i mean in in, in the case of the water project you'll make a return off of it um where in the case of the eb3 it's a pure cost so it's not really an investment it's a it's a pricing to be able to uh, facilitate this okay brilliant thanks everybody for the questions yeah, I think, I, I mean, the, the programs are that straightforward that that we are, it, it's fairly quick to explain it. I think your intricacies come more when we start to look at individuals and how the, the family makeup is and, and what expectations are from them. So again, get in touch. We can do a couple of one-on-one -on -one meetings, go through your specific requirements and see what will work best for you. Thanks, Shane. Um, that's a great questions, by the way. So thanks for that. Uh, great explanation. Uh, so yeah, moving forward, um, I will reach out to each and every single one of you, uh, thanking you for your attendance and uh, setting up a meeting for uh, for the Q and A. Uh, but if you want to have any questions uh, answered, please feel free to email us. And thank you for your time this evening. I hope you found it uh, beneficial. Thank you very much.